As you walk down Perkins Creek, the first dam you come to was built by E. A. Howard, a well-to-do businessman from Oakland, who began acquiring land around here in 1905. He and his wife had a summer home on the other side of Morgan Territory Road. They held trotting races. And neighbors noted Howard wore a fedora, not a cowboy hat, when he rode. But the Anglo history of this land begins several decades before Howard and the other city folk arrived, during the rougher, tougher mining era. Mount Diablo was really the hotbed of mining activity in the 1860s. One of the things that was mined was quicksilver, mercury, here in Perkins Canyon. The Native Americans used it as paint and as a trade item. There was an apocryphal story about a sheep herder back here, very thirsty late in the day, <laughs> taking his ladle into a creek and drinking the water and remarking, boy, that went down smooth. But the first individual to actually begin mining here was a man named Welsh in 1863. Of course, then the mercury was very important in gold mining in the Sierra. It forms an amalgam with gold, grips a hold of the gold, and it separates it from the other detritus. In the 1870s, a man named Ryan began to mine the cinnabar in earnest. He was taking out 80 to 90 flasks a month. A flask weighs 76 pounds, and he was doing fairly well for a few years, but then the price of mercury dropped, and he went out of business. And that was just in time for one of, one of the flakier residents of Clayton history to step in. It was a man named William Ryder Powell, who had on his resume Indian herbalist and circus clown, who had decided he would spend his old age in Clayton. And he was really quite popular. He was the town eccentric. He had an old buggy. He had two trained horses from the circus. He didn't need any reins. He had the horses do tricks for the kids. And the horses always knew where to turn. He told the kids it was ESP. But he had a little rod that he could touch the horse's ears with. So he was quite the popular fellow, but must have taken a geology course somewhere. He saw the cinnabar, and he was going to spend his old days in clowndom being very rich. Up until that time, his, his recreation was every time the circus came to town, he put his paint on and his uniform and go march in the parade in Martinez. Anyway, he homesteaded 160 acres, right about where we're sitting, and he looked around him, and he saw nobody. And he figured, well, he'll claim that one too, even though he only legally had 160 acres, so he built a huge fence on all the land around us. Well, unfortunately for him, that land minus his 160 acres did have an owner. It was the Southern Pacific Railroad. But for a while, they had no interest in the area, so things went swimmingly. But folks started to tell him that you better be careful. That's railroad land you fenced off. Well, that didn't do anything to decrease the paranoia he was starting to feel as he grew older. So his response to that was to get an old horse-drawn streetcar from San Francisco, bring it in, put it up on stilts, and get a rope ladder. He lived in the old streetcar. He'd climb up the rope ladder and then pull it up so no one would bother him. Didn't even need a no solicitor sign. Well, finally, the railroad decided they would get some income from their land, and they leased it out to a, a man named Crandall for cattle, which incensed Doc Powell. And they got into it, the two of them, Crandall and Powell, and Powell took out an old revolver he kept in a gunny sack at the bottom of the carriage, and he shot Crandall dead. And there was a trial, but he was acquitted. Doc Powell still had some goodwill, and they figured that the in the words of the jury, he was not unprovoked before he shot uh, Crandall. Well, a few months later, the railroad leased out the land to a man named Cardoza. And he brought in his cattle, and old Doc Powell got in his face right away. Cardoza went to the sheriff, and the sheriff went and got Doc Powell and said, well, you better behave yourself. I want you to post a $2,500 bond for good behavior. If you don't, I'm gonna throw you in jail. Well, he didn't post the bond, so Doc Powell got thrown in jail. But he knew his rights. He hired an attorney, and he got out on a writ of habeas corpus, which I think means present the body in Latin, which was rather prescient, because the minute he got out, he went back to Cardoza, but this time Cardoza was ready for him, and he shot Doc Powell dead. So that was the end of the only circus clown miner on Mount Diablo. Ken's history continues in segment nine at the second dam site. 
As you head downstream, don't forget to look at the rocks in the creek. You can see some volcanic day site as well as Franciscan rocks such as chert and serpentine. When you come to the first rock dam, which is made out of rock out of the creek, that's a lot of old, old cement. You're tempted to go around it on this side because it seems so close. And that's how I've gotten poison oak several times. This is the right-hand side. Beware. <laughs> go left, use the trail. 